So it's another day and another Helderberg 90. So I figured I'd take you for a test drive. This, uh, this 90 is quite spectacular, quite beautiful, and it will be uh, making its way to North Carolina where it will be going to a new home. But I'm gonna take you for a ride in it. But before I get started, there's a question I get asked often about if it has a block heater. So I've had a number of individuals say, hey, it's a, it's a diesel, does it have a block heater? Can I leave it outside during cold weather? And let me tell you, we've had a serious cold snap here in Sharon Springs, New York. Winter is finally here. And it got down into the very low digits and it starts up. So the only thing that I wanna point out is when you're starting a diesel, it takes one little trick that you have to follow. And that's just to turn on the key to a point, don't start it yet, watch for the glow plug light to light up. And then when it goes out, which is really quick, generally in about a, two seconds, then you can start it. So here we go. And I'll go over all the details of this lifted Heldeberg. But I'll start out where you can just hear it at first. Well, welcome, and like I said, we're in a D90, a Helderberg 90, and it is a soft top, so you are gonna hear noise of the soft top just kind of slapping around a little bit, but it's not that noisy inside. What's amazing with the soft top, though, is when you take the top off completely, it's, it's quieter than if you were to have the top on. And I mean, when I'm talking about quieter, the wind noise and everything is quieter with the top off. And uh, old style, meaning when I was a young guy, I had a, had a convertible and I would drive around with the top down with the windows rolled up, my winter coat and the heat going full blast. And I know that's what Matt's going to be doing when he receives this Helderberg 90, because it's winter, but I know he's gonna love having the top off and having his kids in the back enjoying this. So this is a 2.5 liter turbo diesel that's been performance tuned. Performance tuning, what that means is it's a custom built injection pump. It's a VNT turbo. It's a larger intercooler. It has a three inch straight through exhaust system, stainless steel exhaust system. With the performance tuning, there's a few other things that we do. And the goal of that is really to increase the horsepower, but more importantly is to increase the torque. Because a lot of, uh, I have a lot of people say, well, how much is the horsepower? And the horsepower is more than doubled, but it's the torque that matters. Because horsepower is not what wins the race, it's the torque. Five-speed manual transmission, as I mentioned, but what we do is we re-gear the transmission and re-gear the differentials. And by doing that, it allows us to have the highway speeds. And I know if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I am not a fan of doing any type of a swap to a Defender, meaning putting in another brand motor, like a Chevy motor or a Dodge motor into a Defender because it takes away all collectible value. Then you have a Frankenstein truck that will not go up in value. You just have basically a toy car that will go down in value. 
So if you're doing this for investment purposes or for an heirloom investment to give to your children or you, know, you don't want to take the chance of it going down in value, you need to keep it to its original configuration. And when I say original configuration, that doesn't mean you need the vinyl seats and no carpet and you can change a lot of things, but you want to keep that original drivetrain and preferably if you can keep numbers matching, that would be great. The beauty of the 2.5 liter turbo diesel is it's bulletproof, highly reliable. I've seen many of them with five to 600,000 miles going without an issue. Parts are plentiful, easy to get somebody to work on them. I mean, you can go to an independent mechanic that can work on a diesel, can work on one of these. There's no computer in this, so you don't have computer issues. And computers are what put that black cloud over Land Rover's reputation because they had the Lucas Electronics that caused a lot of issues. This has no computer. So this is the type of vehicle, this is the setup, the configuration that you would see people using in the Outback and the Serengeti because they're highly reliable, very easy to work on. They don't take any special tools and uh, you don't need many tools to work on one. And the parts are just so simple. So highway speeds are not an issue. So that's the drivetrain. Um, let's talk a little bit more specifically. This one's been lifted, so we put about a three inch suspension lift. Anytime we do a lift, we do it properly. It's not a body lift, it's a suspension lift. So when you do a suspension lift, that would require heavy duty prop shaft, a heavy duty transmission. You have to change out the radius arms. You gotta do a three degree radius arm because when you lift it, you're twisting the axle so you're making stuff bind which parts will wear out. That's why you change the radius arm so you put everything, the geometry back the way it should be. It's on a 35 inch open country Toyo tire, which is really quiet and is not like the Max's Trepidors that I use oftentimes. They handle well, they do well in the snow, they do well in the mud, they do well in rain. They're an all around nice tire. A little more aggressive looking than a KM3 in my opinion. This does have the bead locker wheels on it and with doing the lift with bigger tires and those heavy wheels, then that means a heavy duty axle too. It has Fox shocks on it. It has Fox, uh, Fox springs. And the ride is firm, but it doesn't beat you up. It does have anti-sway bars underneath. So if you're on the highway and doing the on-ramp to off-ramp, then you don't have all that body roll. It stays pretty flat and true, which uh, anti-roll bars did not come on Land Rovers originally. So we custom fabricate the brackets for that to happen. But, you know, a lot of our defenders, I would say that, you know, they spend 70 to 80 percent of their life on the road not off-road but a lot of our clients the vast majority of our clients do also do some off-roading and this vehicle or any of the vehicles that we build can definitely handle the off-roading without an issue it has limited slip differentials in the front in the rear and then of course you have the transfer case you don't have to get outside to lock differentials in you just lock it through the transfer case inside the cabin so you can stay warm and dry and then that allows you to actually have a four-wheel drive where your front and your rear is pulling together so a little more information about the four-wheel drive system it is a full-time four-wheel drive system where one in the rear and one in the front pull but again when you lock it into the transfer case that what you're doing is you're you've got actually four different settings you've got a four high four low which is your your four high could be your driving where one in the rear one in the front is pulling that's for everyday driving like during the summer but then you can switch over and then you can lock it into a, a different four high 
which makes the transfer case lock the front and the rear together. So then your front and your rear are turning at the same speed. And then of course you have your low gears too. So consider that to be your granny gear. That allows you to not spin the tire. So if you get in a slippery situation that's a slower speed, then it's giving more torque to those wheels to get you out of that situation. So on this one, it's chorus gray, which is a beautiful color. Uh, chorus gray is a metallic color, and then we did a black soft top. The thing you'll probably notice the most is the interior. So the interior is definitely like a, uh, let's say a basketball color. It's a brownish orange, or call it an orange brown. It does have a diamond stitch interior, and then we did an orange contrasting stitch. So 100% cowhide, everything's leather. There is no vinyl in the Heldeberg. And I have a lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot of people, I get the occasional, let's be honest. I get the occasional person that will say, hey, I wanna get a Heldeberg, but I wanna get it stripped down. There's no such thing as a stripped down Heldeberg. We don't do vinyl interiors, uh, it's leather. And it's just part of the smell, because when you get into this Defender or when you open the door, you can definitely smell all the leather. We even did the sun visors in leather to match the seats. And uh, just this, the feel of this leather, it's very supple. It's a, it feels like a glove leather is what it feels like. Inside the cabin, you will see Apple CarPlay. Uh, you will see LED gauges, it, LED lighting inside. Of course, the Smith clock. It does have air conditioning and heating. It is the Helderberg exclusive system. So it's a high efficiency unit. It has heated seats. And then of course on the outside, it has LED lighting. So LED headlights, LED turn signals, tail lights. This one has the Helderberg billet aluminum door handles and also the billet aluminum hinges. Hinges on the doors, brackets on the windscreen, and then brackets on the bonnet too. Speed wise, yes, it's lifted and yes, it's peppy. It does well. You would be definitely able to exceed highway speeds. You'll notice how easy it is to steer. I can steer with two fingers, no problem. It just, it handles well. And that's part of the process that we go through because it does have power steering, assist. It handles well. It's not like driving a truck. It's not sloppy. The steering wheel's not all over the place. So you can drive with two fingers and shift with two fingers. Being a manual transmission, we rework the clutch slave, the spring, and you're able to depress the clutch. I mean, it's very easy. You can actually do it with two fingers. It's so easy. It's, it's a lot like stepping on a brake. Turning radius on this one is quite, quite good, even though it's lifted. So I'm on a narrow country road like usual and I could do the turn on this and probably a three point turn. It has black carpet throughout and of course it does have sound deadening and insulating. Not as much as our hard top does because it does have the soft top. This soft top though is a unique soft top in the sense that it has the alpine windows across the rear so just like a hard top where you have the Alpine windows on the top, those additional oval windows, but then it also has the rear wing windows in the very rear. You don't see that on a soft top generally. This soft top was handmade, so it's custom made for this build. And the top comes off in about five minutes and will go back on in about seven minutes. It's a one person job. The top is a three ply material. So you have your outer material, which looks like a black canvas. It's not really a canvas, because it will hold up 
it doesn't fade by the sun or anything, so it's UV protected. And it also doesn't crack or start to peel like old soft tops do. And then it has an inner layer, which is like a dense rubber that's an insulating factor. So it allows you to be able to drive a soft top all four seasons. And then it has an inside layer too that covers that dense rubber. This one does have a full roll cage because it is lifted and the roll cage is functional. It does go to the frame. It has the thicker bars on it. So you could take this top off completely, have the roll cage, and then across the top here on the driver and passenger side, you've got metal arches that hold the form of the soft top itself. So, and they're out of galvanized, but of course they've been powder coated black because the color contrast of this Heldeberg is coarse gray and black. So everything goes together. You could opt to do a bimini top. So a bimini top would be a canvas top that would just cover the driver and the passenger, and then it would re leave the rear cargo area open. So this one definitely makes a statement. So far I have 32 miles on it, and uh, I went to the local convenience store to put some diesel fuel in it. And I had to account for about another 15 minutes as people came up wanting to take pictures. So, quite the impressive build. So I'm gonna be quiet and you can listen to it now. So if you want to see more pictures of this Heldeberg 90 called Centurion, Heldeberg.com is where you can go. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and subscribe because uh, the next Heldeberg Defender that's coming out, I think you will be very impressed if you weren't already impressed with this one. But uh, we have some very interesting ones coming out with some really bold colors. Thanks for watching.